Thanks for coming. My name is MZ. This is Ben Fuchs. And I'm not going to take up any more time. How many of you have seen this? The Townsend Letter. Awesome, awesome magazine. So reading from, I'm just going to read a couple things that, that just caught my caught my attention from the town's letter. Do I need to tell you, introduce who I am and the whole stuff, the pharmacy stuff, and how I started, blah, blah, blah? Yeah. Oh, I do? Yeah. Oh, I do. Okay. Well, I tell you, we, don't, we only have about an hour, an hour and a half, and, and there is a ton of information, and my mission is to have you leave with five, 10, 15 new things that you can incorporate into your life tonight to start to lose weight, to start to have your eczema disappear, to have your skin look better, to never have dry skin again, all beginning tonight, once you start to incorporate some of these changes. I've been following this uh, uh, Dietary Supplement Safety Act. Anybody read about this Dietary Supplement Safety Act? The government's concerned about our safety. How does that make you feel? They're very concerned. They want us safe. That's right. They want you to be safe. That means no vitamin C. That means no B-complex. Because, you know why? This is cool. This is the reason. No, not quite. It's because there have been some athletes that have been taking supplements and having false positives on their steroid tests. Now we can't have that, so we have to ban supplements. Makes sense to me. Does it make sense to you? No. Right? So that's about to happen. So I've been following it. So what you'll notice is that before something changes, they warm us up a little bit. So they start off real slow. So now you're starting to hear, vitamins don't work. That's just a scam. You don't need, they, they get you ready for it, right? The latest one is vitamin A causes cancer. If you haven't heard that one, you're, gonna, you're about to hear that one that vitamin A causes cancer. Okay, I had to deal with that one last week because people, you know, most people don't know. Most people don't follow chemistry. You don't want to get your, you don't want to get your health information from the lay media, period. You want to get your health information, you want to get your health information from alternative sources. The mainstream sources are vested always. The mainstream sources are always vested and their vestment is not you or me. Their vestment is themselves. So the mainstream media is the last place you ever want to get health information. Matt Lauer, The Today Show, WebMD. If there's advertising associated with it from mainstream media, uh, from mainstream sources, drug companies, big companies, corporations, you want to be very, very careful. So I get my, all my health information from alternative sources like this, the Townsend Letter. You know, we live in the internet age now, folks. We want to be our own authorities. We want to be our own doctors. I love that word authority. Do you guys hear me talk about authority today? I love that word because it means you're an author. Now, do you want to let somebody else write your story? I don't. I don't. I want to be my own author. And when it comes to our health, there's nothing more important than becoming your own author. Now, when it comes to taking care of your body from a physical standpoint, flat out, from a physical standpoint, there's nothing more important than understanding how to operate your body using nutrition. Yet, there's nothing more, uh, there's no subject matter that is more filled with bad ideas. Ideas that are ancient history. Ideas that do not serve us, and that's why we're not as healthy as we should be. And you guys all know in this room, you wouldn't be here if you, if you didn't know that there was a level of health that you could reach that's higher than the level of health you're at now. There's a level, a level of health that you can reach that you're not at now. And it doesn't require much, it simply requires understanding first and then taking advantage of that understanding. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. The eight chapters of good nutrition. Now, my specialty is skincare. I'll tell you a little bit about how I started the business and how I got involved. My specialty is skincare. I've uh, been developing skincare products for many years. And so I know a lot about skin. I know a lot about how nutrition affects the skin. I got into nutrition because I saw the changes that were being made in people's skin when they started to take supplements for other things. I was like, oh my God, we have this whole modality that nobody's taking advantage of. And that's when I got into understanding nutrition. So here's my story, and then we're going to get into, into uh, the meat of the talk here. Now, by the way, I talk fast. You guys know that I talk fast? Right? I try not to. I try to talk slowly. I, I admire people who talk slowly. That uh, Charlie Friedman, who's on after me, he has the coolest slow voice. <laughs> And I listened to him, and I was like, I want to have a cool, slow voice, cool, slow voice too, but I can't. And sometimes I, my mind goes faster than my thoughts, so, or than my mouth. So anyway, I'm a pharmacist, compounding pharmacist, went to pharmacy school at the University of Colorado in Boulder, graduated in 1986. When I was in pharmacy school, I had two very special uh, concentrations, if you will. One, something that people don't realize about pharmacists is pharmacists study nutrition. We study nutrition in a very unusual way. We study nutrition as if nutrients were medicines. 
We don't study nutrition like a dietitian studies it. We don't study nutrition like a nutrition, nutritionist studies it. We study nutrients as if they are medicines. And we study diseases as if they were nutritional deficiencies. And it turns out that what we call diseases, if you backtrack them far enough, some system, some organ system, some tissue system is not getting fed. It's not getting fed. In fact, when you die, you don't die of heart attack or cancer. You die because your heart didn't get fed. It starved. It died from starvation. We die of starvation. So we study diseases in pharmacy school as if they're nutritional deficiencies, and we study nutrients as if they're medicines. So I'm, I left pharmacy school thinking, well, gosh, we have this whole powerful way of working with the body that nobody's really approaching. And on top of that, what we study in pharmacy school is the poisonous nature of drugs. We study drugs as if there were poisons, and make no mistake about it, your drugs are poisons. And your number one health goal should be, if you're on a prescription drug, to get the heck off of it. Now, there are times you need a prescription drug, I know, I know, I understand that. A little story last night, and it's a true story. I was in the hospital, I had a knee surgery. Anybody ever had a knee surgery? All right, there's nothing quite like when you hurt your knee. If it's torn up, there's no pain quite like that. And so, uh, they wheeled me out of the emergency, or out of the operating room after I had my surgery, and I remember this voice. It wasn't my voice, because I was listening to it. I was like, whose voice is that? But the voice went like this. It's coming out of my mouth, too. It went, morphine, morphine, just like that. I'm like, who is that? But it was me. <laughs> it was my body saying, it wasn't saying vitamin C. It was saying pain pills, pain medicine. Now, and there's times when you need pain medicine. I understand this. I'm not airy-fairy. I'm not Pollyannish about this. But there's no reason anybody should ever be on a drug for a long period of time. That's a doctor giving up. That's a doctor giving up. So there's no reason why anybody should be on a drug for a long period of time. And in pharmacy school, when we're studying the toxicity of these things, how poisonous they are, and by the way, prescription drugs are a leading cause of death. Leading cause of death, and those are the ones we know about. How about the polypharmacy, where people take multiple medicine and they get, get a heart attack? We don't even put that in record keeping. But the fact is, they poison the body. They poison the body to mask symptoms, to falsify. What does it mean to doctor? If you go to the IRS with your IRS tax forms, and you say, these are doctored, what would he tell you? It means to falsify, right? So that's our medicine. That's the idea. We'll pretend you're healthy here. We'll knock out your swelling system, your immune system, so you don't swell. And you'll pretend you don't have arthritis. In Russia, they used to say, uh, back when it was the Soviet Union, they said, the, the workers used to say, they pretend to pay us, we pretend to work. <laughs> Just like that. And I, that's what I think. It's our medicine. You know, that's the way our medicine is. is that he pretends he's healing me, and I pretend I'm fine. But you're not fine. We're not fine. If we're on prescription drugs, we're dying. We're breaking down. We studied this in pharmacy school. So I studied nutrition, on the one hand, as medicine, healing tools. I studied diseases and deficiencies. I studied drugs as poisons. I remember we saw this movie on a drug called... Uh, Indoral. Anybody ever hear Indoral? Okay. This is revolutionary back in the 80s. Indoral, for those who don't know, is a very powerful blood pressure medicine. And it's now, when you have high blood pressure, the first thing they give you is the diuretic. The second thing they give you, sometimes it's the first thing they give you, is this beta blocker. Blocker. What is a block? It blocks your heart. Oh, this is how we'll take care of your blood pressure. We'll stop your heart. That's how we'll take care of your blood pressure. Where did, what planet am I on? How does that even work? If you're taking a beta blocker, it's stopping your heart. That's how it works. You think there'll be toxicities? Of course there's toxicities. So we see this movie on Indoral, how Indoral is going to revolutionize the, the hypertensive business, the cardiac business, the heart disease business. The movie is about a half hour. The first two or three minutes is how great Indoral was. The last 27 minutes was somebody reading the side effects. No kidding. <laughs> reading the side effects. Endless side effects. And if you see a package insert, if you see a package insert, you know what I'm talking about, the package insert that comes, you see all these side effects. Imagine somebody having to read all those. It took her... Three quarter, it took her t uh, 27 over 30 of the movie, whatever that is. 90 plus percent of the movie was the lady reading the side effects. What's wrong with this picture? So, anyway, I got this background in nutrition, got a background in toxicity and medicine, medicinal health, and then on top of all that, one day I'm walking through the basement of the School of Pharmacy in Boulder, and I smell this pepperminty smell coming out of one of the rooms, and I walk into the room, there's this little old man, he's tinkering around some beakers. And, start talking to him, he starts talking to me, and we became friends, and at the end of about an hour talking to this guy, Tony Jones, he says, hey, you want to be my research assistant? I was like, sure. It turns out that this little room I walked into with the peppermint smell was the Blistex research facility, where all the Blistex products were developed, and Tony was the guy who invented the stuff back in the 1930s. And so for the next four 
four plus years, four and a half years, while all my colleagues are off getting their internship hours at Safeway and Walgreens and drugstores, I'm getting my internship hours in the Blistex lab, <laughs> learning everything, I mean everything you could possibly want to know about how the skin works, about cosmetic chemistry, about ingredients, about how you test products, everything, soup to nuts. And I leave pharmacy school with a background in skincare, a background in emulsion chemistry, cosmetic chemistry, background in nutrition, and a background in medicine. So I started to work in pharmacies. I was horrified, not only by what was in pharmacies, I felt so guilty giving kids Ritalin and poisons. They used to give for kids bedwetting, they would give these powerful antidepressants for business before the days of Prozac. Bedwetting, they give a kid antidepressant. Well, of course he's depressed, he's bedwetting. It's not gonna stop his bedwetting. He's depressed, he's got a problem. You don't wanna give kids, you don't give kids poison because you can't handle some kind of psychological problem. So anyway, I felt horribly guilty, but I had this background in skincare in the back of my mind, I was like, I'm gonna start working with skin. And so people would come in with issues about their skin, and I start giving them nutritional supplements to take care of their skin, because I understood how nutrition works. I'm like, oh my God, eczema's going away, acne's going away. Then I start making skincare products using nutrition, nutrition on your skin, because your skin is your digestive system inside out, and these dramatic results are occurring. So I'm like, I'm gonna start my own little pharmacy, which I did. I started a, a nutritional compounding pharmacy that specialized in the skin. That's all we did is skin, and that's all we do is skin. But as I started to develop my proficiency and I started to develop my understanding of the power of nutrition, I'm like, everybody has to hear this stuff. Everybody has to know this stuff. I've seen acne disappear, eczema disappear, people lose weight, blood pressure drops so fast that, that people drop too low because they were on blood pressure drugs. Cholesterol problems go away. The most incredible things happen when you start to operate your body. You start, you start to know the code of the body. The body is a code. I was talking to a friend of mine. He's like, he didn't understand women. I was complaining about women, okay? Go figure, right? So, so he's, he's complaining about women. I said to him, Tabidi, just because you don't know the code, don't blame the safe. <laughs> okay? And I thought that was really clever, actually. I still think that's clever. But, but that's the idea, right? It's the body has a code, and we gotta know, it's a safe, and you gotta like, you know, you gotta figure the code out. Everything in life has a code, folks. Our whole life has a code. That's the mission of our life is to figure out the code to have a good life. So now these days I talk about the power of nutrition, but you know if you've heard my program, I talk about a lot more than nutrition. Because the code to a successful life is spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, in that order. In that order. And I don't want to be the kind of nutritionist that says just take this vitamin or that vitamin or this pill or that pill or do this or that. It's not like that. You have to have a spiritual dimension active in your life, whatever that is for you. Okay, non-denominational. Whatever that is for you, something bigger. Where's my friend who was showing me the cosmos recently? Or just a, there you go. Okay, I was, looking, I was looking at a picture of the cosmos. My favorite prayer book in the world is a Barnes and Noble, it's a big coffee book, or a coffee table book, with pictures from the Hubble telescope. You ever seen that? Wow. Yeah, that don't make you spiritual, nothing will. That'll bring you to your knees, nothing will. We live in a cosmos that is so unbelievable. Okay, and that's on the macro scale, on the micro scale, holy moly. What goes on in your body, ladies and gentlemen? How dare we be depressed? We should be on the phone every minute calling our friends. Do you know about DNA? Do you know it's 125 million miles of DNA in your body and it's all squished together in a little tiny cell? 64,000 will fit on a pinhead and it's a blob of jelly and 100 trillion will get together and they run your body. The most incredible stuff. And we're just, oh, my friends, my broke up with my girlfriend, oh. You know, there's so much majesty and power all over us on the cosmic level and on the little level, right? Okay, so that's what, that's, that's my whole, sh what I want to say here is spiritual, mental, emotional, physical. You've got all these dimensions that have to be active. And I never look at somebody who's sick and just say, just take this pill or that pill. You've got to work on all the different levels. But from a physical level, from a physical level, there is a code that nobody told us about. That nobody told us about. In fact, it's the opposite. They told us the wrong information. And uh, I talk about memes. You guys have heard of the term memes? Remember me talking about memes? A meme is a unit of information that spreads, like a gene. A gene replicates and, and spreads itself. Well, there are memes that do the same thing. Richard Dawkins wrote a book called The Selfish Gene, where he talks about how genes spread. And he says that genes don't care about you. They don't care about you. They just want to spread. You're just a carrier for it. That's all. You're a vector. That's all you are. And memes are the same way. They're units of information that don't care about you. And we have units of information in our culture that spread that don't serve us, such as... I'm sick, I'll go to the doctor. That's a bad meme. That's a terrible meme. Or, I have a headache, I'll take a pill. That's another terrible meme. 
Or I have dry skin. Oh, ladies, let me tell you something. Men too, especially ladies. The dumbest thing you can ever put on your dry skin is a moisturizer. The dumbest. It, it's a surefire way to guarantee you use a moisturizer the rest of your life. And whose interest is that, do you suppose? <laughs> do you suppose? It's not your interest. We love that at Blistex, by the way. You ever notice you get addicted to your Blistex? Same idea. When you use lotion, you shut down your skin's natural, natural moisturizing properties. Same on your lips. That's why you get addicted to your lotion and your chapstick. That's why, have you noticed that your dry skin hasn't gone away no matter how much lotion you put on? You shut down your body's inherent mechanisms and that's what's wrong with healthcare. That's the meme we have. We shut down systems in the body instead of turning them on. So, that's a long introduction. But, now that you've heard about me, I'm ready to talk about the eight chapters of good nutrition. The eight chapters of good nutrition, protein, fats, carbohydrates, fiber, water, vitamins, <coughs> minerals, trace nutrients, or accessory nutrients. All right, chapter one, protein. And by the way, this is nowhere near comprehensive because we don't have a lot of time, but I'm gonna try and hit on the highlights here. As best as I can, I'm gonna try and focus on the skin. Put this right here, terrible time. All right. Protein comes from the Greek word proteus, means of primary importance. Protein is the gears that run the machinery of the body. If your body is a machine, the wheels are protein. The gears are protein. Everything that turns is protein. If you don't have protein, the gears are not going to work correctly. As far as the skin goes, like the rest of the body, 80% of the skin is protein. You have to take the water out. 80% is protein. So ladies, no matter how much wrinkle cream you put on, if you don't have protein in your diet, correct protein in your diet, you're going to have wrinkles. Because the tissue that holds your skin intact is protein. Now, it's more than that. We'll talk about that in a moment. But first and foremost, you've got to have the correct protein, and nobody does. Nobody does, because what do we do to our protein typically before we eat it? Cook it. Cook it. You cook it, you start to denature it. You start to lose its value as you cook it. To the degree you cook it, that's the degree you lose its value. So, the ideal way to do your protein is not cooked, which means powdered protein. Powdered protein. Why everybody's not doing powdered protein, I have no idea. It's how you want to do your protein. Now, you can have your steak and your hamburger and whatever it is you want, but first and foremost, make sure you get your protein needs met in a cold processed powder. The way protein value is measured is by something called BV, which stands for biological value. And biological value is a measurement of how much of, pro how much of the protein that you ate is used. It goes on a scale of 0 to 100. 100 means 100% of the protein you ate is going to be used. Make sense? Okay? So the BV scale is 0 to 100. What do you suppose a 100 on the 0 to 100 scale is on the BV scale? Eggs. Yes? Eggs. Egg protein. All right? One of, the most, one of the most harmful, silliest memes in all of healthcare and nutrition is this idea about eggs being bad for you. Okay, and I don't, if anybody ever tells you that cholesterol, what's your cholesterol, 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 send them packing. That's nonsense to anybody who understands biochemistry. And by the way, the best, uh, the best healers, if you will, physiologists, I hate that word, but the best people who can help you with your body are chemists, biochemists, not doctors, biochemists who understand the biochemical pathways, how A gets turned to B gets turned into C. That's the key to health on a physiological level, is how the body's making things, and that's biochemistry. Find a biochemist. That's who you want to go to. To understand any biochemist, by the way, in this room? Do you study biochemistry? Okay. Biochemistry is what you want to understand, how things get turned into each other. So, when it comes to protein value, egg is the gold standard. Zero to 100, it gets 100. Okay. Soy, down a little bit further, 75. Milk, dairy, by the way, dairy's a big problem. Milk. You should all, I'm sure you guys all know that. I'm preaching to the choir, hopefully. Cow's milk. Big, big problem. I don't care if it's raw or otherwise. So, but there are fractions in the cow's milk that can be very powerful. Uh, milk is a very complex substance. It's technically an emulsion, which means it's oil and water mixed together with a lot of stuff inside. It's got a lot of pieces in it. Not all the pieces are problematic. In fact, some of the pieces in milk are extremely powerful. And they're wonderful protein. In fact, one of the major complexes that's in milk is called whey. Exactly. And typically when you're making cheese, you extract this whey portion because milk, one of the, the two biggest portions of milk are a liquidy portion and a gummy portion. And if you put enzymes into milk, 
the enzymes will react and the liquidy portion will go to one side and the gummy portion will go to another side. And they used to use that gummy portion. They still use that gummy portion. But in the old days, they loved that gummy portion because it was very portable protein. The problem is, that gummy portion is very hard for the body to process. Technically, it's called casein, C-A-S-E-I-N. You may have seen that, uh, that name on an ingredient guide. Casein causes many of the problems with milk. There's other, there's other parts of the milk that are problematic, and those tend to go out in the gummy portion. The liquidy portion used to get thrown out. Back in the old days, they actually used to, used to use it. The, the gummy portion is called curd, and the liquidy portion is called whey. Little Miss Muffet sat on her tuffet, eating her curds and whey. That's where we get that from. They used to do that in the old days. They used to do it in the homes. The homes were, they called them cottages. That's where you get the name cottage cheese. That's what cottage cheese is. So in any case, they used to throw, they, they, in the old days, they would do, eat the way. They were smart. But then around, when, when science became all in vogue, around the Industrial Revolution in the, in the 19th century, they started to change how they ate, and they thought the whey was, until somebody around 1950 or 1960, some scientists got the idea, let's see what's going on in the whey. They would give it to the animals. The animals loved it. The animals thrived on it. So they would see what was in there, and they found this amazing stuff. This protein that was not only nature's most incredible source of protein in terms of building things, but it also had anti-cancer ingredients in it. It had ingredients that supported your digestive system. It had ingredients that helped detoxify your body. It helped in had ingredients that built up your immune system. And it was all in this stuff that they were throwing out. And so they started to give it to athletes because it had a protein spectrum, a protein uh, design that was specific for building. Think about it, that's what it was for, it's for building an animal. So they would give it to athletes, and athletes went crazy. They went crazy, and I don't know if some of you remember this, but back in the 70s and 80s, all the athletes were doing whey protein. That's when I started to get the idea. Gosh, if athletes are doing this stuff, you know, we're all athletes. Just getting your butt out of bed in the morning is an athletic event, all right? We were all pretty much, right? So, I mean, if they're doing it, we want to do it too. And so I was like, let's start working with this stuff. And sure enough, I started giving it to people in my pharmacy. I started taking myself because I was always involved in athletics. The results are mind-blowing. And to this day, it is the most powerful, most effective protein known with the exception of human mother's milk. So if you can't get any human mother's milk, that's the protein you want to be going for. Hey there. Yeah, did I see you last night? Was that last night? That was last night I saw you, right? You. You. Yes, you. No, oh, in the purple. Oh, me? Yeah, you. That's your name, though. How many of you were here last night, or did you talk last night? Okay. All right, so. Try to laugh at the jokes. Okay, good. All right, so. Uh, or was I? All right, so whey protein. It's so good, it's off the charts. It's 104. That means you get more protein value than you put in. How cool is that? If you're not on whey protein, folks, oh my God, you are crazy. You are crazy. Now, there's a protein, hang on one second, Kate, please, one second. There's a spectrum, there's an uh, amino acid. By the way, proteins are built up of little building blocks called amino acids. The amino acids in whey, there's a specific group of them called branched chain amino acids. And any bodybuilders, weightlifters in this room? If you're a bodybuilder or a weightlifter, you go to the health food store, you go to GNC just to buy BCAAs, branch chain amino acids. They'll cost you 50 bucks for a bottle of 100. Go to GNC and see it. You get the same BCAAs in, in uh, a week or 10 days worth of whey protein. The same BCAAs that bodybuilders spend 50 bucks a month on. Yes? How do you buy the Yeah, buy it in several ways. I'll get to that in a second. Okay? There's so several ways to get it. I'll tell you how to do all this stuff here in a second. I just want you to get and understand the power of this stuff. So, the two most important proteins, whey and egg. There's a lot more to say. I wish I could say it all, but in the interest of time, I've got to move on. How do you do it? Well, first of all, you want half a gram to a gram per pound of body weight. Half a gram to a gram per pound of body weight. If you're sick, you're recovering, you're, you're post-surgery, you're growing, you're an athlete, you're under any kind of stress, you need more. You need more. Protein is supportive for the immune system and for building things. So after surgery especially, in fact, before surgery and after surgery, half a gram to a gram per pound of body weight. If you're an NFL football player, you're doubling or tripling that. Okay? Now, there were, uh, don't worry about overdoing it. Your body will not let you overdo it. If there's a hormone system that kicks in that shuts down your appetite when you've had enough protein. It's a do great diet. It shuts down your appetite. That's why I think they give you, what's the first thing they give you at the restaurant? They give you protein? No. No. Right? They give you bread. We'll talk about it in a second. How do you get it? There's several ways to get it. Now, some of you may be involved with Longevity, some of you not. I love the Longevity products. The reason these Longevity products are here 
is because it helps me help you in several ways. It's very difficult as I travel around the country and talk about nutrition to say, go to this store or that store, because I don't know what the stores carry, and I don't know what brands the stores carry, and I can't stand behind every brand, so it's very difficult for me to recommend things unless I know what they are, and I know these products. I know the people who make the products, I understand what's in the products, so this allows me to help you. Secondly, from a business standpoint, if you guys are interested in learning about this from a business standpoint, I need help. I need help spreading the word. So if anybody who's in, I said this on the radio, I need help uh, from a business standpoint. So if anybody wants to help me, I need four or five people who can help me do this. And if you're interested, stay afterwards and we'll talk afterwards. And I'll stay here as long as you want to answer questions. So um, how do you get them? Two ways you can get, three ways you can get them. Number one, there's a product back there, uh, Suzanne Summers, what's it called? It's a Suzanne Summers protein. Whey shake. Whey shake. It's a great source of protein. Tastes great. The sugar's in there. We'll talk about sugars here in a minute. Sugar gets a bad rap, but sugars can be very important for health. Sugars can be very important for digestive health, and sugars can be very important for the immune system. So when we talk about sugars, we tend to just say, oh, sugar, bad for you, and it's not true. Sucrose is a problem. Glucose is a problem. Certain sugars are problems, but complex sugars are very important for the immune system, for protecting you from the sun, and for, uh, for the digestive system as well. And the Suzanne Summers product has sweet sugar-like substances that help your digestive system. It's a very well-formulated product. There's another product called Nature's Whey, which is a more of a replacement, meal replacement. It's got sub uh, substances in it in addition to whey for meals. Those are two ways you can get it. The third way is to go to the health food store and buy New Zealand Whey. That's the third way that you can get whey protein. So there's three ways you can get it. Answer your question. Okay? Is that cool with everybody? Make sense? Okay? But make sure you're getting enough of it. Now, the body talks to you. It talks to you in cravings. You want to listen to your cravings, but it has a little bit of a skewed language, so it's not quite direct. You will crave sweets when you're protein deficient. You'll crave sweets when you're protein deficient. Now, how often do you crave sweets? Right? Every couple hours, maybe? That's how often you're protein deficient. That's how often, right? Whoa, is right. That's how often we're protein deficient. That's how underproteinated we are. See, we're all still on chapter one, and you're gonna to begin to see, well, no wonder. No wonder I'm not feeling as good as I should. No wonder why I have weight problems. No wonder why I got arthritis. No wonder this, no wonder that. You start to see this is just chapter one. This is just chapter one. Our health means are destroying us, folks. They're destroying us. So chapter one, protein. Half a gram to a gram per pound of body weight. Focus on whey and egg. Don't pay any attention to that nonsense about cholesterol and eggs. It is pure nonsense, by the way. Not just the white, there's more protein in the yolk than there is in the white. And the yolk has magnesium, it has B vitamins, it has choline for your brain, it has zinc, it has essential fatty acids. What more do you want from a food? And it's got lecithin that helps you use the cholesterol to build cells, to help you uh, uh, utilize and absorb fats. Holy moly, and we, this poor egg, you know, poor little egg, it loves us. It's feeding us the most incredible, powerful nutrients, and people are like, I don't eat eggs. I better, I just had the whites. Oh my God, what a tragedy that is. And those silly packages where they, where the liquid fake whatever eggs. Oh my God. And, and how, like an egg is hard to deal with. You know, you crack the thing. I'm not a great chef, you just crack the thing. What else do you have to do? And by the way, raw eggs are delicious. And that's really the way to do it, is raw, if you can do it. Now salmonella is an issue, and so you gotta make sure the egg's clean and fresh, and I recognize that, but if it's clean and fresh, raw eggs got everything. You do have to take extra B vitamins with it because there's things that can mess up your B vitamins if you're doing raw eggs. Do a smoothie. Do smoothies. Understand the power of smoothies. Understand the power of liquids. How many of you have digestive problems? 60 to 70 million Americans have digestive problems, maybe more. So I read that a year ago. It's probably more. Antacids, the number one leading, uh, leading over-the-counter drug, the antacids. I used, to work in, I used to work in nursing homes. I was a pharmacist. And, uh, Everybody in the nursing home is on antacids, right? Like when you're old, you're, when you get old, you just get on antacids. You're old, you make more acid. Listen, when you're old, you don't make too much of anything, all right? <laughs> Nothing. There ain't no too much, right? That thought of it is ridiculous. Make too much acid. Stupidity everywhere you look. Everywhere you look. And not only that, but acid's important. You need acid. Acid's for absorbing things. Oh, shut down the acid. Oh, you got heartburn? Let's shut down the acid. Please, do you see what, do you understand the idiocy here? The idiocy. And then prescription drugs that shut down your acid. And then my mom's on prescription drugs, shut down her acid, she's had heartburn, right? And so she says, 
I can't figure it out. Now my bones are falling apart. Now I have osteoporosis. Well, you can't absorb things. You shut down protein absorption, mineral absorption. So I got her, I told her for years, I said, take probiotics, right? Probiotics, good bacteria. I'll talk about that in a minute. You guys all know what probiotics are? All right. So uh, I said, Mom, you got to take probiotics. Well, what do I know? I'm just a kid. You know? I don't know what you think. <laughs> my doctor told me, right? So, uh, so she said, Mom, please take them. Oh, my heartburn. Oh, my legs. Blah, blah, blah. So finally, I didn't even ask her. I sent her. I bought her some probiotics. I sent them to her, right? And I, and I called her up a couple days later. I told her what to do. A week later, she calls me up. It's a miracle! Just like that. Just like her heartburn was gone. And I know what she's thinking because I've seen it. It looks like a miracle. It's not a miracle. You're a miracle. We're a miracle. Our bodies are miraculous. The healing powers of our body are miraculous. That's the miracle. You just got to know the code. So anyway, I'm sorry to digress here. I like to digress. Do you mind that I digress on the radio? Okay. I love it. I, that's just it. Yeah. But tell us about smoothies. Okay, smoothies, sorry. Let's <laughs> go somewhere here. All right, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, you guys feel free, feel free to keep me on track here if I get offline. All right, so, uh, okay, so, what's that? Okay. So, if you have any have digestive problems, all right, digestive problems, all right. Here's the cure for all digestive problems, you ready? Never again. You know anybody who has a digestive problem? Never again. This is the cure. Right? Write this down. Get your pants out. I tell your friends. Here's the cure. All digestive problems. Stop eating. You won't have a digestive problem. Guaranteed. Stop eating. You can't have a digestive problem if you stop eating. It's the simplest thing. I can't. Why? Just don't eat. Oh, I can't stop eating. Yes, you can. Number one, if you have a digestive problem, it's costing you energy to process it. It's costing you energy. You don't feel better after you eat if you have a digestive problem. You feel worse. So of course you can stop eating. Not only that, but when you fast, a hormone system is, kicks in that makes you feel high. Anybody ever fast for a day or two? You feel high. An entire hormone cascade kicks in that causes you to feel great. You don't even want to eat. You don't even want to eat. So number one, you can fast. And appreciate fasting. The power of it. Once a week. Once a week fast. Well, once a month even. When did your digestive system get a break? Okay, for most of us, never. Never, except for a few hours here and there. What's that? Okay, on your own kip, she gets a break. All right, good for you. That's good. That's good. Well, that's why you're looking awesome there, baby. That's why. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Good job, Kay. Thank you. So, uh, yes, but fasting is a very powerful tool. Secondly, secondly, in the meantime, when you're not fasting, drink your nutrients. Drink your dinner, not Jack Daniels, not Jack Daniels. <laughs> drink your dinner. Drink it in soups and drink it in smoothies. One of the best ways to get protein into your system, one of the best ways to get protein into your system, for your skin especially, but also for your immune system, also for your digestive system, is bone soup. How many of you heard me talk about bone soup? <laughs> bone soup. The stuff in bones is pure medicine. Remember that book that came out, Why Sharks Don't Get Cancer? Remember why? How many, you remember that book? It came out about 20, oh gosh, I'm dating myself here, but a long time ago. Do you how many remember that? Why sharks don't get cancer? Well, the idea is that the cartilage in the sharks, in the, in the shark, it, all cartilage, has powerful medicine in it. Power, and we've used it in pharmacy for centuries. Bovine tracheal cartilage, they call it. They use it for everything. Cartilage and bone contains factors that not only support your immune system, they fight cancer. You have a bone marrow transplant, what are they doing? They're taking stuff out of the bone. Not only fights cancer, not only supports immunity. What are you supposed to eat when you get sick, when you get a cold? What kind of, what are you supposed to eat? What food? Chicken soup, right? Not Campbell's chicken soup, bone soup. Where you take the bones and you soak it in water. The stuff in the bones is powerful for the immune system, A. It's an amazing protein for your skin and for your bones and for your blood vessels, collagen. It's all the amino acids for making collagen. That's your heart, your blood vessels, your circulatory system, your skin, wrinkles, and your bone. Bones, don't worry about calcium. We're all worried about calcium for our bones. We get more calcium in this country than any other country in the world, and we have the highest rates of osteoporosis. And then you got Sally Field telling us about some poisonous drug. That's the worst drug. Okay? I, those, those bisphosphonates, they call them, these, these drugs, and they say, don't you dare lay down, because your body's going to spit that stuff up. It's going to burn. Your, your body's rejecting it. That's what's happening. Anybody on that stuff? They say, don't lay down, because they know if you're laying down, all that stuff will burn in your esophagus. How many of you are on Fosamax or, or uh, Boniva or any of these drugs, bisphosphonates? Awful drugs. 
Awful, awful, awful drugs. So, by the way, how are you doing, doctors? Is this good stuff? All right, good. All right. I like it when there's doctors here. I like that. I didn't offend you or anything. No, he's a dentist. He's a good guy. All right. <laughs> no, I don't have, I have a lot of friends who are physicians, and it's an honorable profession. It's just a dumb profession. No, I'm just kidding. No, it's just a joke. <laughs> Scratch that. All right. So anyway, where was I? A bone soup. All right, so for your immune system, for your skin, but here's the best part. The stuff in the bones coats your digestive tract. It coats it, it soothes it. It's sugars that literally coat your digestive tract for anybody who has any digestive problems. All they should be doing is bone soup. You get your chicken bones, your fish bones, your turkey bones, whatever bones, soak it in water, stick it in a crock pot, throw in the veggies, let it sit. I'm a bachelor, I don't even want to look at it. I don't want to think about it. If, you're, if you don't want to wash dishes, it's perfect. Okay, then you come back, put it in a mason jar, drink that all day. That's all you drink, that's all you eat. That's it. That's it. And have the veggies in there, you get your electrolytes, it's amazing. And then, get yourself a Vitamix. How do you know what a Vitamix is? It's the most amazing high power blender, and I don't work for Vitamix, I don't get any money from Vitamix, but that stuff is amazing. It's this high power blender, you can throw the whole cucumber in there, oh you want it? You want it. For those of you dieting, one of the reasons we eat a lot is because our bodies are looking for nutrients. One of the best things you could do if you're dieting is get half a cucumber or whole cucumber, Put it in a blender if you have a blender, but a Vitamix is great. Drop it in, drop a clove of garlic in there, or spices. Spices are very good for shutting down the appetite. And drink that all day. It is so satisfying, unbelievable. All this is a cucumber with water and some garlic and some spices. So you, with a Vitamix, you can do this. And with a Vitamix, you can get all your veggies with the fiber. That's the cool thing about the Vitamix is you get the fiber too. You can make almond butter like you wouldn't believe, by the way. You throw some almonds in there. It's the most amazing almond. Applesauce? The whole apple, that's it. Grinds it up, turns it into applesauce with the seeds yeah. and the peel. Anybody ever do this with their Vitamix? Okay, it's amazing. All right, so that's how you take care of digestive problems. You don't eat, you fast, and you do soups, and you do juices. And you make sure, tie this all back, because I know I'm going somewhere here. It may not seem like I am. But tie this all back, we're talking about protein smoothies. Get your protein in liquid fashion. Have your steak in your hamburger, whatever that is, you'll find you're eating less. You know, I had people say, I had a guy email me, he said, I want to help you with your business, but I don't want to sell any product. I don't like selling product. Folks, listen, this isn't sales. This stuff's going to change your life. It's going to change your friend's life. You say, well, I can't, people can't afford it. You can't not afford it. You can't not afford it. Not only that, but you'll eat less. You'll be eating less food. You'll be eating less because your body will gain the nutrient, be getting the nutrients it needs. Have a smoothie with three scoops of protein and throw in some fiber, and throw some water in there, and throw your fats, which we'll talk about here in a second, and you won't want to eat for hours. And you won't have to fight it. I hate willpower. I have no willpower at all. I hate the word willpower. Because that means to me, there's this fight going on inside. Yes, no, yes, no. How healthy is that going to be? Right? It should be easy. It should be easy. You should just flow naturally. You have your protein, you have your smoothie, you're not going to want anything. Cake? I don't want cake. Doesn't look good. And that's what will happen, because as you eat, you can't believe it, right? It's shocking. Protein kills your sugar cravings. And your sugar cravings are caused by protein deficiencies. Protein will kill your sugar cravings. And you say, well, I just had a steak. I still want dessert. Guess what? You didn't have enough protein. Because when you have enough protein, it will shut down your sugar cravings. It will shut down your... And I don't want to digress too much, although that seems kind of silly to say, doesn't it? <laughs> um, your digestive system is shut down by sugar. The dumbest thing you could ever do after dinner is have a cup of coffee and a piece of pie because that will shut down your digestive system, especially if you have protein, because then the protein will just sit there. That's a dumb thing to do. So have your coffee and pie two or three hours later or even before. Just another one of those silly things we do as a culture. All right, chapter two, fats. I love talking about fats. Because fats are the most misunderstood chapter in the whole handbook of good nutrition. Fats are so important for so many reasons. And I knew I'd get to use this transparency. Honey is just sugar. I mean, there's some few nutrients in there. I wouldn't mess around with honey. You don't need it. The vinegar's great. Vinegar's great stuff. Yes. Apple cider vinegar is awesome. What's that? In terms of a fat? Poach it. If you want to cook with but the best cooking fat, I'll, I'll talk about this in a second. The best cooking fat is coconut fat. Coconut oil. Virgin coconut oil, great for the thyroid, great for the immune system, tastes great, stable. 
how I turn this on. Okay. So, pretend that's a cell. Remember, a cell is a blob. Well, just a little blob. If it's 64,000 red blood cells on the head of a pin, it's a little blob. But inside this little blob, there are trillions of atoms. Trillions. You know, we live in this age of where economic inflation where trillion doesn't mean anything anymore. But trillion, that's a ridiculous number, folks. They're not a trillion. There's a hundred trillion atoms in a cell. How long do you think it would take you to count to a hundred trillion if you count one by one? Three years. Thirty years? A hundred years? Thousand? Three point three million years. If you had to count, that's how much a hundred trillion is. And you have a hundred trillion atoms flowing around in your each one of these six these cells in which you have a hundred trillion of them. You don't want to even go there. In the middle, you have DNA uh, nucleus, and then you have DNA in the middle. The DNA gets turned into protein. Is this good? Are we good here? Yeah. Chicken scratching here. The DNA gets turned into protein. People used to say, "Oh, the gene controls everything. Genetics control." Did I mess up? You guys laughing at me behind my back? That's not very nice. All right, whatever. The DNA. The DNA gets turned into protein. So they used to say, well, DNA is everything. They call it, by the way, they call it the central dogma. That's what it's called, the central dogma. Next time your doctor says it's in your genetics, or you say it's in your genetics, you're referring to something called the central dogma. What's a dogma? Belief. A religious belief that's held on faith. That's what the DNA theory is, the genetic theory is. It's the uh, religious belief that's held on faith. It's not true. It doesn't work. Because people who have no genetic propensity for something get something, and vice versa. And there's only, you got 150, 200,000 proteins in your body, and there's only 25, 30,000 genes. We have the same genes as a monkey or an earthworm for the most part. So clearly there's a problem linking the two, unless you know an earthworm, you know. An earthworm has the same DNA with 90 plus percent, the same DNA as you do. In any case, the central fatty acids work here to help the protein come out. This is so important. I'm glad. It's one of the main reasons I wanted this transparency, because I want you to get this. Essential fatty acids work here, genetically. Genetically, fats work genetically, folks. <coughs> That's powerful stuff. You turn on your genes. For women, EFAs act like estrogen. <coughs> if you have hormone replacement therapy, if you're contemplating hormone replacement therapy and you're not on EFAs, you're crazy. I've seen hot flashes disappear. Disappear when you're on EFAs. And oh, by the way, here's how you can tell you have a fat deficiency. Remember, how do you tell you have a protein deficiency? Sugar. sugar, right? Crave sugar. How do you how do you have fat deficiency? You crave fat. Your body needs fat. And you will go get fat wherever it is. And in turn, you will get fat. Because your body can't process that. Your body can't process that. It's looking for EFAs. Now there's a, a couple other things that happen with essential fatty acids that nobody talks about. You have hormones in your body. You have let's do this right. You have insulin, right? That's a hormone. We'll talk about insulin here in a moment. You have thyroid hormone. I'm just throwing out hormones here. You have your sex hormone, <laughs> testosterone, progesterone, estrogen. All of these hormones work <coughs> by connecting into little ears on the outside of a cell. I'm talking to you. This, the, the words are coming out of my mouth. They're going into your ears, and you're getting a message. Well, cells do the same thing. But instead of words... And instead of ears, they have hormones and receptors. That's what a hormone is. It's a communication molecule. It's a word. It's a command. <laughs> However, there are other hormones that don't go into the ears, but simply sit outside the ears. And they make the ears more or less receptive to the hormone. They're called master hormones, because they control all the other hormones. If you're a biochemist, they call them mycosinoids. You may have heard of prostaglandins, for example. Some of you may have heard of thromboxanes. Those are all examples of master hormones. They work on the outside. Is, this, is my chicken scratching here good? Are you guys okay with this? So that is kind of a mess. But um, You have hormones sitting in the receptors, but on the outside, you've got master hormones that control all the receptors. Well, those master hormones, those icosinoids that control all the other hormones, the effect all the other hormones have, come directly from essential fatty acids. Directly from essential fatty acids. Don't worry about DNA yet. Did that make sense? I'll get you a second. Hang on a second. I'll get you. I want, you, I want to make sure everybody understands this. These master hormones are made from essential fatty acids, icosinoids, these chemicals that help all the other hormones work. That means under deficiency states, none of your, of your other hormones will work correctly. If you're not on EFAs, you're deficient. 
That is, none of the hormones will work correctly. Should I go over that again? Does that make sense? You want me to go over it again? Okay. <coughs> yes, you're getting some good chemistry here, by the way. This is some good stuff. The outside part of the cell, by the way, remember how small these things are? Well, there's hundreds of thousands of ears, hundreds of thousands of these receptor sites. And all drugs work at the receptor site level. I don't want to get too much of a digression here. But, so these are the ears. They're called receptors. The hormones sit in the receptor. In some cases, they actually go into the cell, but we won't. Don't complicate things. The hormone sits in the receptor, you get a reaction. Like a doorbell ringing. They used to say the lock and key. <laughs> you did warn me about that, Don. I know that. Okay? So does that make sense? The hormone sits in a receptor and you get some kind of action. Well, on the outside of the receptor, on the outside of the receptor, you have other chemicals that make the receptor more or less receptive. Are you with me? Say yes. yes. Are you allowed? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. They're more or less receptive. Those master, they're called master hormones because they control everything else. They come directly from EFAs, essential fatty acids. If you have deficiencies in these, none of your other hormones will work correctly. Deficiencies in icosinoids. That means problems with your thyroid. That means problems with diabetes. That means problems especially with your sex hormones. So you have two places right off the bat where essential fatty acids will help with hot flashes and menopausal symptoms. Did you guys hear that? Okay? If you're on toxic, and make no mistake about it, natural or not, natural or not, hormone replacement therapy, if you're on toxic hormone replacement therapy without being on EFAs, you're nuts, and your doctor's nuts. The first rule of medicine is do no harm. That means work every other way but, but pharmaceutically first. Every other way, whatever you can, this is one of the main ways to do it. I'm not going to deal with this anymore, so hope you like that. All right. Okay, so essential, essential fatty acids for icosinoids, essential fatty acids for making protein, and for the skin, essential fatty acids are, uh, deficiency in essential fatty acids are responsible for dry skin. For dry skin. Remember I said the dumbest thing you can put on your, on your dry skin is a moisturizer? Your dry skin is your body's cry for EFAs. It has nothing to do with water. If you've ever heard, oh, drink more water if you have dry skin. Anybody ever hear that? Yes. Has anybody ever had their dry skin disappear by drinking more water? No. Never happened. Ever. I've never, and I've been doing this a long time. Never, ever has somebody's dry skin improved by drinking more water because it's not a water issue. It's not a hydration issue. It's a fat issue. Fat traps the water. You should never, ever need a moisturizer. You should never need a moisturizer. Your, moisture, your dry skin is your body's cry for EFAs. Three ways you know you have an essential fatty acid deficiency. Three ways. Number one, fat cravings. You should never be able to eat supersized fries. When you have enough EFAs, you won't even be able to eat two fries. How do you like that? You won't even like the taste of ice cream. Not, it won't be hard to resist ice cream. You won't like the taste of it. You want the taste of it. Once you've met your body's need for fat, it won't want more fat. So number one, you can tell you have a fat deficiency if you have dry skin. Number two, you can tell you have a fat deficiency is if you crave fatty foods. You're not feeling it. Look at the pizza and your mouth starts watering. All right? That's a craving for fatty foods. The third way for women is menstrual cramps. <laughs> menstrual cramps disappear when you start taking EFAs. I've seen it happen countless times. It takes about two months. And, and uh, by the way, if you women get cramps, what kind of foods are you craving at the same time? Fatty foods. Fatty foods. Okay? And probably, your skin's probably dry too. You get, if, you, if you start taking EFAs, your cramps disappear in a couple months, and then I see this happen. People get all cocky. They go, oh, I don't need those EFAs. I don't need cramps anymore. And you get your cramps back. The next month, they come back right away. And I've seen that happen a lot. So three ways you can tell you have a fat deficiency, cravings for fatty foods, dry skin, and menstrual cramps for women. Fats are also involved in... Actually, I should... Before I say that, fats are absorbed in the colon. Fats are absorbed in the colon. We'll talk about fatty vitamins here. If you have a colon problem, you will not absorb your fats. And you'll take your EFAs and you won't get any fat. It's a colon problem. And many people have subclinical colon problems. Subclinical means they're not bad enough to go to the doctor. They're not bad enough to go to the doctor, but they just don't feel so good. You know, when you eat lunch, after lunch, you shouldn't need a nap. You know how we need a nap? Everybody needs a nap. I hate doing talks at 2 o'clock because I know they just had lunch and they're going to be falling asleep right in the front row. It happens to everybody. There are whole countries that shut down at 2 o'clock. They call them siestas. The whole country shuts down. 
And it never dawned on anybody that they're eating the wrong stuff. It never, it's, of course you need a nap. I, I had lunch, of course I need a nap. No, you just put oil in the tank, gas in the tank, now you need a nap? That doesn't make sense. Have a salad. You think you'll need a nap after a salad? Does anybody feel tired after you eat a salad? Have a cucumber. You ever go, oh, I had a cucumber. Oh, I'm so tired. I need a nap. Never. Right? It's always, it's always starches and grains. And starches and grains are a huge, huge, huge problem. Human beings were not designed to eat that stuff. Whole grains are not. We'll talk about that in a second. But they plug up the colon. They cause malabsorption of fats. If you had a gallbladder removed, you'll have a problem absorbing fats. Because the gallbladder is important. All your organs are important. If you had a gallbladder, keep it. Don't let them take it. They love taking organs out. There's a lot of money in taking organs out. It's a big business taking organs out. Seriously. All right? So the gallbladder is very important for, for absorbing fats. So are the female reproductive glands, or, uh, organs. The uterus, the ovaries, the breasts are important for absorbing fats. All of that. That's one of the reasons why when your hormones drop, when you get older, you don't, your skin gets drier and you have all the manifestations of fat deficiency. So, if you're having malabsorption of fats, you need to know about lecithin, which we talked about in eggs, bile salts, and by the way, there's a, great, a couple great products that have these in the longevity line. Did you guys bring the ultimate enzymes? The ultimate enzymes have all of this. You need fat absorption aids, and we'd all benefit from fat absorption aids. So if you have malabsorption of fats, you can tell, by the way, if you burp up. That's a sign of malabsorption of fats. You take fats and you burp up, or you eat fats and you don't feel comfortable. Those are malabsorption issues. Okay, now again, I wish I had time to talk more at length about some of these topics, but I want you to get a feel for this. That's the most important, and what I really want to do is inspire you. I want to inspire you to take the initiative yourself. I want to inspire you to become medical detectives so you can backtrack and figure this stuff out. I'd much rather have this make sense to you than me just say, oh, take this vitamin and that vitamin. Does that make sense? You follow what I'm saying here? Be your own authority. Be your own doctor. Fix yourself. Be your own physician so that you understand the mechanisms. If you have dry skin, backtrack it. Okay, maybe I need more fats. I'm craving fatty foods. Okay, it all starts to go together.